from New York, Mr. Molinaro. The gentleman from New York is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you um, uh, to my colleague from Indiana. Let me first clarify. Uh, uh, I, I live in the state of New York where Mayor Eric Adams decided and the city of New York to declare itself a sanctuary city. It opened its arms to individuals from across the globe. The city of New York decided to transport individuals, treating them not as human souls, but simply, simply as property to be displaced to upstate counties. There is no screening. There is no criminal background check. And in many cases, there's no monitoring or any coordination between the city of New York and those other communities, those other communities that made no such decision, no such choice. Earlier, my colleague across the aisle suggested that, that the governors that uh, engage in similar activities should simply coordinate and communicate with those other cities. Well, how about the city of New York co communicating and coordinating with the rest of the communities? My colleague suggested that s governors merely should turn their attention to, to the president and simply ask for assistance. Ironically, Mayor Eric Adams made exactly that request and was met with deafening silence. My colleague across the aisle suggested that this is a manufactured crisis. It is a humanitarian crisis at our border that too many of my colleagues in power, by the way, for several years, chose not to pay attention to. President ignoring. And now communities across the country are faced with a humanitarian crisis. I'm sponsoring the bill not because I don't care about the souls. I spent 12 years locating and identifying real shelters for individuals, unaccompanied minors. I sponsored the bill because families and communities in New York State and in New York City know their schools are not empty. These are centers of education and academics and athletics. And during the summer months, these are the places, by the way, that single moms send their, their children to get the services and support they need. Lunches are provided. And for kids like my own, therapies for those with disabilities are provided. For two and a half years, we turned our back on those very children. So these families are frightened, they're upset, and they're agitated by a government that doesn't pay attention to the concerns they have and instead displaces their children. When the city of New York has the capacity and the president and the White House has the capacity to address this problem where it exists. Mr. Speaker, I was uh, intending to speak on a number of provisions within the FAA reauthorization, and I'd like to try to get to just two. Within this uh, FAA reauthorization bill, the Access and Dignity for All People Who Travel Act, which I lead, ensures those with disabilities who need special seating accommodations receive them. Too often those with disabilities ignored. This bill rectifies that. Another within the FAA reauthorization is the Future of Aviation Act. This allows public airports that receive funding to use money. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to yield an additional 30 seconds to Mr. Molinaro. The gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. This allows uh, uh, additional uh, uh, funding to airports to advance advanced air mobility, including EV tolls and electrical aircraft charging and additional building out of their infrastructure. And lastly, the bill includes uh, uh, AAM that will help uh, reconnect rural communities, reinvigorating tourism, improving ease of movement, and connecting rural communities to regional airports. And with that, Mr. Uh, Speaker, I yield back. Gentlewoman reserves. Gentlewoman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you. Um, you know, we